Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. It's Toya Harada here, and I have something awesome for this video. For the first time ever, I have a guest on, Jose Ortega. So, what's up, Jose? How you doing? Hey, how's it going, Toya? Nice to meet you. Well, I've already met you, but uh, nice to talk to you here. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. So, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people that are in the crypto community know what happened over Christmas, and it was like the 24th, 25th, 26th, but a lot of the channels, it feels like it was all of them, we're getting these copyright strikes, and Jose's channel suffered this as well. So I wanted to talk to him a little bit about that. So, uh, yeah, if you could maybe just introduce yourself a little bit and then talk about kind of, you know, what actually happened with your YouTube channel. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I guess uh, let me put my, my channel up on the screen so that way uh, people can take a look at that. But, yeah, basically um, uh, I've been a crypto YouTuber. I'm kind of like a small potatoes in the space. You know, I only have like around 2,300 some odd subscribers but yeah basically what happened is that i woke up on december 23rd and i got a nice little notice from uh youtube saying uh that i got a copyright i mean that i got a um what is it like um, a guideline strike uh one of those youtube uh, guideline strikes and um it was just pretty much uh saying um that 30 plus of my videos were blocked and taken down and that um, if I were to commit that crime again, all of a sudden that I would uh, lose my channel. And um, so, you know, not lose my channel, but like I would get a strike and then subsequently another strike and eventually you lose my channel. So, you know, to me, I was extremely worried at first because I was like, holy crap, you know what I mean? This is uh, no bueno. Um, and especially since uh, it just came out of nowhere, they striked 30 of my channels, I mean 30 of my videos, and they were random videos because um, if anyone knows my channel, I, um, you know, I post everything from talking about Bitcoin, talking about um, politics, talking about everything, and at the same time I also talk about um, living in Mexico because I am an American that uh, now lives in Mexico, so I talk about, uh, you know, what it is to live out here, expat life, you know, Mexico life, and all these other things, and so it was really weird that I got videos um, talking about Bitcoin, um, get you know blog talking about Venezuela. I mean those weren't that weird But the weird ones were were like, you know videos of me and my girlfriend going to the beach It's like what you know, and so then all of a sudden, you know, so I got where you know, it was kind of disconcerting And then the you know, I was like, whoa fuck what am I gonna do We're trying to figure out what I'm gonna do and all this other stuff and then before I could even figure it out December 24th, you know rolls around I wake up and I get another email from YouTube um, basically at this point now um, another 20 plus videos got um, blocked, you know, just taken off of YouTube altogether. And um, and now I got one strike. And at that point, now when you get one strike, you're basically um, um, you're basically blocked out of YouTube. So I wasn't able to upload no live streams. I couldn't post to the community. I couldn't access anything. I couldn't talk to anybody. And this all happened during the Christmas break, which, as you know, um, you know, most people are kind of like offline, off the grid, you know, they're hanging with family, whatever. And, um, yeah. yeah, it was really scary because all of a sudden now, um, you know, not only was I blocked out, um, I couldn't even talk to YouTube because everyone's on vacation at YouTube as well. Um, I got a, I got my first strike on the 24th. So my thinking is like, oh my God, I'm going to get another strike on the 25th. And by the time the 26th rolls around, I'm not going to have a channel. They're just going to make me disappear. And people are still going to be on Christmas break and they won't even know what's going to, what happened. But you know, it was really, it was really disconcerting. You know, it was really scary for a bit um, because I didn't know what, what was going to happen. And then all of a sudden I started uh, seeing that there was a lot of other YouTubers out there dealing with the same thing and it wasn't just crypto youtubers even though it was mainly crypto youtubers but it was uh, youtubers from all over the place even my girlfriend's grandma she's mexican literally um you know living out here and she follows uh you know certain uh, political channels you know uh, mexican political commentary channels and they were also blocked and things like that so it was just really weird i think it was just basically the um, um a new algorithm um you know, update that they did to YouTube, and that would did just a, a clean sweep of anything that maybe even brought up the word Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, and a lot of channels just got caught up in that, and bam, everyone got blocked, and um, and everyone just got um, you know in trouble. And it wasn't until um, I, I again, like on the 25th, I think it was, or late on the 24th, but I think it was then that all of a sudden, like a lot of crypto YouTubers, people that had you know, uh, 200,000 plus subscribers, uh, a million subscribers, things like that. They started, um, you know, contacting YouTube through Twitter. And all of a sudden, uh, YouTube apologized, which they never do. 
and then on top of that, on the top of apologizing, they were very quick in uh, returning everyone's account back. And then, you know, my account obviously did not get returned. So then I kind of took advantage of the situation that I saw that YouTube was out there talking and, uh, you know, um, communicating with the rest of the crypto space. And uh, and so I, I reached out to YouTube and uh, told them, oh, so what's going on here, YouTube? Uh, so you're only going to be helping out the bigger channels. Are you guys just is this part of a purge in which uh, you're you know, you were you know, this was all perfectly calculated so that you can uh, eliminate the smaller channels and blah, blah, blah. You know, I sent them a tweet like that. And bam, before I knew it, I got an answer and bam, a couple hours later, everything was returned to my channel as if nothing happened. And again, it was crazy because I'm glad that I was able to do a lot of show, a lot of have a lot of screenshots and, uh, you know, have a lot of evidence to show for um, at the end. You know what? I think I might be able to show some real quick. Um, let me see if I can find it. But, uh, yeah, it was really interesting because, um, yeah, I have like actual evidence here. Let me um, let me put it on the screen real quick so you, everyone can see. But, yeah, here's um, the first. Here's just copyright strike. Here is um, all right. This is me something dealing with something else here. Um, there's the there's the the copyright thing. Okay, yeah. I don't, I don't know where the other pictures are. Oh, there they oh, there they are. So yeah, and then here you go. You see, I was only as you guys can see on the screen. I was only just one strike away from losing the complete channel, and it was uh, really scary. But yeah, I was able to reach out to YouTube and uh, jump on the bandwagon with uh, the other uh, crypto YouTubers, and bam! Before I knew it, I got my channel back and. Bam, that's it. That's yeah. uh, that's kind of my story. Sorry, it went a little long there. I'll let you. Uh, uh, in, no interview. problem. Yeah. Actually, it's great that you got it back because that was one like the first thing I thought is like, oh, they're gonna let the bigger people back on because again, they have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. A lot of people will know about it, but I was more worried about the smaller channels because you know they don't have that kind of reach and they could cause a little ruckus about it, but it's not gonna spread. And uh, so it's great that, you know, they did get back to you and they did, um, like, fix everything. But I, I also noticed, because in your case, you got pushed all the way to that last strike. And I noticed that that was the, the common theme. Everybody was getting, like, basically all the way up. They had one more strike now. And, um, yeah, I don't know if that was, like, re if it really was a glitch or anything like that. But I, I really thought it was, like... I don't know, like a warning or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, like oh yeah, 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 definitely a warning. You know what I mean? From uh, big, uh, from Big Brother. All right. I mean, literally, yeah, yeah. literally. All right. In fact, um, are you familiar with Kim.com? Oh yeah. I okay. Love Kim okay. So when all this was happening, um, Kim.com, you know, and this is as already YouTube was already reacting and uh, giving the stuff back to people. Kim.com tweeted out literally saying that. Uh, that this was a calculated attack by YouTube that failed because they went after the one group of people that actually um, had uh, a way to fight back. And um, and then, you know, YouTube uh, reneged, you know what I mean? YouTube kind of like, uh, um, you, you know, they were, um, they, uh, then it was it, they, they started, like I'm stuttering here. And, uh, and then they, and then they, they said, fuck it, let, let's, uh, let's um, give these people back their channel because otherwise the repercussions can be greater. But uh, the thing is that the damage is already done. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's already like once they did this, it was already too late. You know, um, they already, they fucked up. That's basically what happened. And so, you know, now, you know, what it's done is that I, I feel like what it's done, it's that like it split the, the youth, it split the crypto community in the sense that now, because look, one one of the major com complaints that I had about what's happening with crypto is the fact that a lot of us that are OGs in the crypto space that understand why Bitcoin and all this stuff is really important, you know, we, our voice is kind of getting lost because there's other voices that are replacing my voice or the voice of reason, meaning, you know, people just want to make money. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, every time that you hear or you look at any, uh, crypto channel, Bitcoin channel, or anything like that. It's all about how to trade, how to make money, you know, why, you know, whatever, how to get more fiat currency. And so, yeah. you know, what I talk about is the, the opposite. I'm like, I'm telling you guys, you know, what this stuff is really, what it really is. You know, it's like, I, I don't, you know, it's like someone telling you, okay, what other channels do is like telling you how to trade gold and silver, knowing that these markets are completely fake, phony, and false and manipulated. But, you know, I, 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 I tell people, hey, buy gold and silver, don't trade them. You know, that's kind of retarded. Oh, by the way, oh, oops, yeah. oops. I said a bad word there. Anyways, <laughs> but, um, well, but you know. Protect your wealth. Don't, don't try to get fiat because that's rapidly, you know, being devalued. Try to get something that's going to hold its value and, and maybe even go up a little bit. 
But, well, basically, what uh, what Bitcoin is, just like gold and silver, is a hedge against uh, the dollar. It's a hedge against this fiat currency. It's a way for you to you know put your money into something that will not um, you know what I mean lose its value um, over the long run. Because look, at the yeah. end of the day, um, even if Bitcoin were to have kept its uh, value all throughout the year and it would not have moved, all right, let's just say that it would have remained in you know the exact same price from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, um, you would have actually retain more value from your money keeping it in bitcoin or gold or silver than if you would have kept it in cash because if you keep money in the bank account well you already know that they charge you and on top of the the, the charging that they you know that they add uh, to your money in your bank account um they also um you know you got to account for inflation so if you got a thousand dollars in the bank account today by the time that you know a year from today rolls around, meaning January 1st or January 2nd of 2021, um, you know, that thousand dollars, it's still going to show a thousand dollars in there, but you're going to be buying less with that thousand dollars. So it's really worth less. And so, you know, that Bitcoin or gold or silver that you have, even if it lost a little value in the reality of it, when you kind of do all the math and the numbers and the mumbo jumbo, it's like, oh shit, actually it retained its value. I retained uh, the value, uh, you know, that I put into it at the very least. And so that's yeah. that's basically what you know what Bitcoin is all about. And then you know right now when it comes to the to the to the point where you know there's a lot of people out there that they cannot get a bank account because they're just too poor. You know what I mean? With they don't qualify um, in order to get a bank account. There's I mean I don't know what your income level is or has been or in the past or what have you, but um, I know there's a lot of people out there that they don't even qualify for a bank account because they don't make enough money. So when they you know, finish their week uh, at McDonald's, you know, and they cash their, you know, they get their check at McDonald's, they have to go to the check cashing store and get paid, you know, and get charged like 10 to 15% just to, you know, get their money because they, get, they yeah. can't even deposit into a bank account because no bank wants to do, you know what I mean, do business with this in- individual that, you know, is a, a flight risk, I guess, or what have you. <laughs> I remember a couple of years ago, actually, I went to, I think it was Bank of America, um, I don't know, I was trying to open up an account and they were telling me I needed $10,000 and I was like, what? <laughs> like just to open it? Like how do you think I have that just sitting around? Like, right. And, 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 yeah, and by the way, by the way, high. and by the way, if you do have $10,000 rolling around, you already know what the government's going to do. If you if you deposit ten thousand dollars into that Bank of America bank, they're already the flags are already. You know what I mean? Like I mean, the, the ridiculousness of, of the ridiculousness of this whole thing. You know the fact that they that most people trust banks even after you know the the, the situation with Wells Fargo, the situation with um, you know all these. You know now it's like um, I think if you if you do any transaction over a couple thousand dollars, like two three thousand dollars, you're already setting off alarms. I mean, yeah. which is ridiculous, you know, uh, it, I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's very frustrating um, to say the least. And so, you know, when they did this purge, I guess, you know, um, what I was looking at was the fact that um, the, the channels that they were purging were channels that were talking about what Bitcoin really is, what Bitcoin represents and what, you know, yeah. how Bitcoin can help the individual. But there was a lot of channels out there that are literally scam channels. In fact, there's this one channel called, uh, I mean, his name is Trayvon uh, James. Yeah, yeah, Trayvon James. And this guy is scam central. All he's been doing is scams. In fact, the FCC is trying to sue the guy, and yet he still has daily uploads talking about scams freely. And even and then after the purge happened, you know, he was laughing and he was saying, he's like, uh, you know, if this purge was really to go after, you know, bad actors, then everyone in the fucking crypto space knows that I should have been the first one, you know what I mean, to get uh, banned or blocked or whatever. And yet here I am talking about, you know, the, the the insanity of all this while there's a bunch of other crypto YouTubers actually talking knowledge, education, and they're the ones that got blocked and banned. And yeah, I mean, that goes to show you, you know what I mean, like uh, where, you know, what they're trying to do out there. Yeah, I, actually, I always thought that, that, you know, the reason why... They want like when when Ripple was three dollars a couple of years ago, <laughs> and all the big YouTube channels are telling everybody it's going to go to to ten dollars and a hundred dollars. But if you look at like the supply, that would be insane for for Ripple to actually hit that price. But I really think that they were trying to get as many people into Ripple as possible. So when it inevitably you know started to go down, it would burn a lot of people, and then yep. they would just have. That, that feeling of, of being ripped off by crypto and they would think all cryptocurrency is a massive scam and and they, they just wanted people to lose money so they would be like less likely to, to look at crypto in the future you know yeah, what I mean yes sir yes sir in fact you hit the nail right on the head because uh, 
you know, for the longest time um, since the crash, you know, since the crypto crash of late 2017, um, literally um, everyone, you know, there's a lot of people in the space, you know, like, again, the people that are just traders and, um, you know, kind of like the outside casual investor trying to make some money, you know, they don't know what the fuck is going on. They don't know why the price is, you know, um, going up or down or they're basically going down and what's going on and this and that. But people that, you know, like me, you know, or others like you, you know, you, we already know what the fuck is going on. It's manipulation 101. And they've been, you know, the same manipulation that they've been doing um, to the stock market and to other assets um, all across the board. You know, all of a sudden now they've been doing to Bitcoin, you know, literally to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And um, a lot of people just did not want to believe that. Um, I, I was already warning people for a very long time, you know, back before it even happened and then through that whole um, scenario. But even then, I was also trying to think, um, well, you know, maybe... You know, that's not the case, but that's really the case. And then it wasn't up until a few months ago, literally, I think it was in November of uh, last year, that they finally came clean, meaning that I think it was the Fed or uh, the guy, um, Giancarlo something. I forgot his name, Giancarlo, whatever, the guy that was in the head, the, the head of the the crypto thing or the head of the financial something. I don't know, some guy that's uh, Trump appointed in order to uh, take care of uh you know, not the Fed or anything like that, but, you know, someone that's involved in the financials, right? And that um, that whole situation. And he was the a guy that we in the Bitcoin space, you know, we were all to toting up like a like a guy that was on our side until, you know, the, the news broke um, literally from that guy's mouth and a few others that, you know, um, uh, Trump back in late 2017 already saw the not only the, not, not the potential of Bitcoin, but saw the threat that Bitcoin yeah. was posing, not just to the dollar, but to pretty much the whole system as a whole. And so then he was the one that was, I mean, literally, this is all verbatim, all said, you know, this is all like proved already. Um, There's no, um, you know, hearsay type of shit. But anyways, um, yeah, literally Trump was the one that was instrumental in uh, setting um, these people and, you know, putting these individuals in, uh, in power in order to, um, um, create um, Bitcoin futures, Bitcoin um, derivatives, Bitcoin, you know, all of these things to trade and slam the price down. And again, it wasn't just yeah. Bitcoin, you know, that it, it goes for all cryptos all across the board. And um, sure enough, that's what happened. And yeah, that's where we're like, at. Oh, yeah. No, we shot it. Yeah, basically. I actually, I don't know if you're familiar with X22 report. Yeah, I am. I am. I mean, he does like kind of some out there stuff, but the interviews that he does, I always watch because he gets some really good people on. And uh, he uh, he had somebody on actually talking about exactly what you're talking about now. And it was he said the whole thing like when it went to twenty thousand, um, it was out of control and they didn't want it to rise anymore. Yep. And then Trump had that guy sort of you know fast track the futures markets and everything like that to put the clamp on it, yep. so big money couldn't manipulate it without actually buying and selling the Bitcoin itself, you know what I mean? I do, I do. I mean, and, and that's the thing, like, it's like um, a couple months ago, like, the actual proof came out, you know, meaning that, you know, like, right now, you know that, like, places like Deutsche Bank and HSBC, they get caught all the time with, or, or Chase Bank or JP Morgan, they get caught all the time, not, not only laundering money, but manipulating the price of silver, the price of gold, they get yeah, caught actually, all the... the JP Morgan uh, precious metals debt right. is being investigated on RICO charges. Yeah, but right I mean, yeah, yeah, but, but, you already know. You know what I mean? This is like, uh, you know, and then nothing's going to happen. This has been, you know, they've been fucking investigating this shit for fucking eons already. Um, and, and, you know, they, they, they always come up with, uh, you know, yeah, they, they were manipulating silver. We're going to find them find them ten thousand dollars is like bro you know really you know but anyways but but yeah yeah so you already know so basically that's what happened now with uh with bitcoin that they came clean you know they were caught red-handed and they just you know they came clean and that's it you know what the fuck are you gonna do about it you know what i mean it's like you know again it's like catching the mafia guy doing a crime what the fuck yeah. are you gonna do about it you know what i mean are you gonna do and again go ahead and talk i dare you you know what I mean? Like, you know, so, you yeah. know, yeah. So it's the same thing that happened. Basically, that's what's happening with Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, one thing that I, um, I I saw a stat today that was actually kind of mind blowing. But, you know, basically, even even with all the manipulation of Bitcoin and all this, you know, everything that's happening there, um, Bitcoin um, in last year alone has already it did like I think like a 10,000 percent more transactions than a than a than a platform like Venmo. 
So, you know, oh, with wow. that, yeah, yeah, with that being said, you would think that the price of Bitcoin would be, you know, crazy high. But again, if you understand the manipulation and you understand like all the things that we were just talking about now, um, I, like I think a lot of viewers do, then you would understand that no, the, the, the price of uh, Bitcoin is going to remain stable and remain uh, at a certain level, just like gold and silver. And even though gold and silver have seen uh, a surge in the last like year, year and a half and so on and so forth, because of the whole economic, uh, you know, turmoil around the world, we're also seeing uh, as it got slammed down, you know, sure, it went close to 20 again and bam, they slammed that shit down. We got gold, you know, back into 15 plus, 1550, whatever the fucking bam, they slammed that shit down again. And the same thing with uh, with with uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin got to like, I think, 11, $12,000, $14,000 and bam, they slammed that motherfucker back. Back down again now the thing with uh with bitcoin is a little different is the fact that it's a worldwide market um it's um you know and there's and there's a lot of people that are just constantly buying into this because again there's a lot of venezuelas a lot of turkeys a lot of irans a lot of yeah. you know that they just keep you know That's adding more why it's so important is for those sorts of countries in, right. the, in the first world nations and things like that it's not as important although you know we're, we're starting to kind of get to where these other countries we're at with you know like all the different regulations and you can only use this amount of money a day from your bank account like we're getting to that point but some countries have been there and they're right. actually past that and that's you why know, you know like, and, a lot, and a lot of these countries they already been using bitcoin for a very long time and this is nothing new to them you know to us in in the u.s market it's basically just a speculation i you know spec you know on speculation yeah. just like you know betting on fucking tin hats or whatever you know on tin foil yeah. hats <laughs> but uh but uh yeah and the rest of the world are actually using it and so it's funny because a good a, a major killer to Bitcoin has always been the fact that the volatility, the volatility in price. But now all of a sudden, this manipulation could work in the favor of keeping the price non-volatile. So as people are looking for an alternative, all of a sudden now Bitcoin is looking even better because it's not as volatile. So you know what I mean? There are people are like they feel even safer to put their money in there. And again, a lot of people just don't have a choice because if you're like in a place like Argentina or or Venezuela or or, or, or Iran, it's like if you don't use Bitcoin, well, you can't transact, period, end of story. You know what I mean? Like, it's as simple as that. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. I think it, it's, it's eventually going to hit a point. It could be this year, in five years, ten years. I think it's going to hit a point, though, where it's out of all the state's hands. Like, the banks won't be able to do anything about it. The, the governments won't be able to do anything about it. And, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like that point is coming where oh, it's yeah. just going to take off. Everybody's going to use it. They're not going to be trying to get in and out of fiat anymore, and they'll only be valuing things in Bitcoin. And uh, I don't know. They, that, and then when that happens, it's going to be out of their hands. They won't be able to manipulate the price anymore, or you know, they can't stop or restrict anybody from broadcasting. I mean, transactions look, man. Network, so. Basically, you're you're right. You know what I mean? Like, basically, this is going to be the decade of all that major tr change. And look, the reason that right now people are in fiat and people still use the old system is because. Unfortunately, everyone is tied to that old system. They can't get out even if they wanted to. That's just the way yeah. it is. But as the system keeps tightening and tightening and it keeps pushing people out, well, people are not going to have much of a choice but to, you know, go into this. Yeah. So that now all of a sudden what you're seeing is that you're seeing all of these countries, you know, especially in the U.S., all they're doing is that they're trying to pass as many new rules and regulations in order to try and uh, corral, you know, this stuff. But again, it's like, you know, putting uh, bans on drugs or putting bans on, you know what I mean, uh, or, or, or trying to restrict, you know, the use of these drugs, you know, like at the end of the day, you know, you can ban drugs, just like you can ban uh, cryptocurrency, but again, is, uh, you know, that that uh, that drug ban doing uh, much good, you know what I mean, like, you know, you can still get drugs anywhere you want, and the same thing with, um, you know, with this stuff, you know what I mean, as they try to, you know, ban it or, or get rid of it, and, you know, people are just going to use it because they don't have a choice. And, and that's the thing. You know, right now they're 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 so behind the times that right now one of the new legislations that they're trying to pass is that they're trying to ban straight up, like outright ban privacy coins. And to me, it's like I laugh at that because it's like, first of all, you can't ban privacy coins. That's like banning um, a, a post-it note, you know what I mean, that I'm going to give to my neighbor. Like, I mean, you can, you know, ban it, but by, by the, by the, by the time that you find some sort of way to have some, some entity here to take that piece of paper out of my hand and arrest me and go through all that, it's like, dude, we're already way past 
all that. You know what I mean? And so that's that's the thing. You know, right now they're trying to ban privacy coins, but they, they can't ban privacy coins because they, they don't they don't even have access to figure out how people are getting these privacy coins. So how the fuck? So if all of a sudden it's like you know I'm I'm banning um, air. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like and it's yeah. like yeah okay. No secret to yeah. Nobody. <laughs> Actually, um, in, in speaking of privacy coins, are you familiar with like that Mimble Wimble and like Grin and Beam? Well, look, man. The thing is, it's like, yeah, kind of, sort of. But look, this is what what I think is happening, and like, I don't want to sound too, um, whatever. But look, basically, what's happening with this new world and space that we're moving into is the fact that the the protocols, the the projects, the ones that are going to survive are the ones that don't have anyone attached to it. And it's like, it has to be a, a thing like a Bitcoin, meaning that we don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. And yeah. Bitcoin was just created and given to the people. So those are the projects that are basically the ones that are going to survive in one form or another. It has to be something, I mean, we might be able to know who the creator is, but that guy has to be detached from the from the thing itself. So in the case of Litecoin and Nimble Wimble and all that shit, I used to be a big Litecoin guy. But, you know, the further I go into this space, you know, um, and realize, you know, what's really at stake here, um, that's not going to work because basically how this is what's happening. Right now, if they're going after people like Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, Kim.com, and the list goes on and on. What makes you think that somebody that created a uh, Bitcoin, you know what I mean, is gonna be, yeah. you know, safe from the, the the clutches of the government? It's like either you play, yeah, either you play ball or you look at what happened to these motherfuckers. You're you're gonna be next. You know what I mean? And that's basically how it's gonna work. I mean, that's basically how it's working out right now. Because the thing is that the reason they can't stop Bitcoin is because, well, they have there's no point of failure. They have no one to go after. Now, definitely, if you look at a lot of these other projects, you see, you know, either people are doubling down, you know, meaning, ah, fuck it, we're going to take on the government. Okay, good luck with that, brother. Or they're trying to eliminate themselves as much as possible from that. So, like, in the case of, like, uh, Litecoin, um, what, what Charlie Lee, which was the founder of Litecoin, did was that he sold all of his coins and then he opened up the Litecoin Foundation, and now the Litecoin Foundation is who owns, you know what I mean, the the Litecoin, and now he has detached himself from that. So in, in a sense, through legal ways, he has been able to detach himself from that. You, you know what I mean? But again, yeah, yeah. we already know how the laws work, and if they really want to come after you, they'll come after you because there's others that did not do those things, and they're in hiding right now. Like, for example, Roger Ver, which was the guy that created Bitcoin Cash, not only has he renounced his U.S. citizenship, but that motherfucker's out on a land. You know, he's out there, you know what I mean? Like, we don't know exactly oh, where the fuck he is, but, you know, he's definitely yeah, not stepping foot. I didn't foot. know that. Because you know, I, I know about Roger Veer and all that. I didn't know he's in hiding, though. Well, I mean, I don't know if he's in hiding, per se, but, I mean, I know he's not necessarily making his whereabouts known all the time. And he's definitely yeah. not stepping He's definitely not stepping foot in the U.S., you know. And that's the thing. And, I mean, that's the thing that, you know, people are going to start to slowly realize one way or the other. And, in fact, going just to stay on Roger Ver for a minute, you know, Roger Ver, he was always, always very loud and adamant uh, about his project and all this shit. But now if you look at, you know, Roger Ver... You know, you barely hear a peep from him. All right. Yeah. You know why. All right. But look at look at Craig Wright. Look at the, the other guy that Craig Wright. You know, he's trying to claim he's Satoshi Nakamoto. He's trying to take ownership of Bitcoin. And so, you know, people at this point, I'm like, uh, OK, yeah, yeah, go go ahead, bro. You know what I mean? You know, that's like somebody, you know, when I'm looking at Craig Wright, I'm like, I think that guy wants to get arrested. You know, what I mean, I think that this guy wants to be a martyr. I don't know what the. I think this guy has lost. Um, his mind. And that's the only way I can look at that guy. You know what I mean? Because either he doesn't know what the fuck is going on, or he's just so, you know, what I mean, narcissistic in his own mind that he thinks that, you know, there's. I, yeah. I always thought he was some kind of plant from the banks or something like that. Like the way he said that he could verify it, but he would do it in private. And then that what was it? Gavin Anderson yeah. was one of the early Bitcoin developers, and he showed Gavin Anderson. And then, you know, he reluctantly admitted it, but then kind of fizzled away into the background. Like, I always thought there was something strange going on with that guy, because, you, you, like, the whole thing is, you know, you don't, you, you verify, you don't just, you know, trust somebody. It's a trustless system. Right. So if he really created this, he could show us all publicly. I don't know why it was all like a hush-hush thing. But then he is actively out there talking about how he is Satoshi Nakamoto. I always just thought he was some kind of weird plant. He, I mean, I, I don't think he is. Or, 
I don't think, know. yeah, I mean, I don't think he's a plant. Honestly, I don't think he's a plant. I think he's just a dumbass. You know, that's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you know, we, I mean, you're old. I mean, I don't know what your age is, but I'm guessing you're, you know, you're probably something around me, my age. And, you know, we already know if you live long enough, you see a lot of dumbasses, a lot of fucking, uh, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm trying to think of the Animal House quote. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah, what yeah. is it like? Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, drunk, fat, and stupid is no way to go through life. Type of shit, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of people like that out there, unfortunately, you know. And that's the thing. Uh, and um, yeah, that's why sometimes it's a, it's kind of hard, you know. It's, it seems like we're it's an uphill battle when uh, we're doing all these things, or you know, even recording this video that only a hundred people might see and shit like that. And it seems like it's a a very very uphill battle that you know um, it just keeps getting more difficult every day, but. I don't know. I, I I'm I'm kind of like a I'm I'm a poor man's historian. I love history, and to me, I look at it more like, nah, man, we're just laying the groundwork because a lot of this stuff happens like almost overnight, and at some point, you know, everyone's gonna start waking the fuck up for real, and then you know, thank God that we, you know, out here are creating all of this content so that people can start educating themselves. Because look, back to going back to the X twenty two X twenty two report for a minute. I used to listen to the X twenty two report a lot. In fact, I, st I, 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 I always listen to him almost every day up until after the Trump election. And then when I saw that, you know, Trump started going the complete opposite direction as to everything that he said he was going to do. And then I started seeing people like the X-22 report, you know, starting to instead of, uh, you know, holding him accountable, they started like um, apologizing for him or excusing him or whatever the yeah. fuck. I was like, ah, oh, no, I can't listen to this shit anymore. Because to me, it's like, look, I got duped. A lot of us got duped with Trump, but we got to fucking call it like it is. And we got to fucking man up and fucking, you know, like, you know, just, you know, hey, we fucked up and that's it. But we can't fucking sit here and pretend like, you know, like the, we're doing the same thing that we did with Obama. You know, like, again, at this point in Obama's, uh, you know, presidency, a lot of us were like, oh, well, you know, he's just saving it for the second term. Oh, he's, do, he's not doing it. No, he's not saving shit, man. He's, he's part of the fucking agenda. You know, he is not on our side. He is, again, every single fucking thing that he does. You know, he does 10 horrible things for every one thing that he does that's good or that we think is good. But, again, you know, he might do one good thing and then overnight he's re-signing the Patriot Act. Or, you know what I mean? He's saying, like, oh, we're not going to go to war with Iran. And then, you know, he's fucking, you know, bombing Iraq, you know, like, hey, gay okay, Iran, how you doing? You know, we're here. Yeah. We're here. We're queer. Yeah. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I've been seeing. Like, I, I tried to hold out hope that, you know, he was going to end all these endless wars. But now <laughs> he's sending, you know, 4,000 more troops to Iraq. He's, he's pulling out of Afghanistan, 4,000 troops. But he's sending them somewhere in the Indo-Pacific. We're upping our military presence over there, and I'm just like, you can't keep saying he's ending these. Dude, it's wars. it's and it, yeah. more troops over there and now, it, and it's not even so, just over there. I mean, again, you know what's happening over there because I see on your channel you talk about what's happening on that side of the world a lot, but I talk about what's happening a lot here in Latin America. And I mean, you, you know, Operation Condor 2.0 is, uh, right, you know, we're in the middle of it right now. You know, right now, the, whether it's the coup in Bolivia, whether it's uh, the you know the planned coup or the tried the attempted coup in Venezuela, you know. Know, now they're, they're can you believe that fucking Trump and the administration are now trying to actively start a coup here in Mexico? I mean, to me, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I, I still can't believe it that that's what they're trying to do, but they're trying to do that right now. And it's like a real thing. And most people like you tell them that and they're like, nah, this is not, I mean, what do you mean Mexico? But it's like, no, because like it, it really is true because even the Mexican president is completely, um, you know, he's talking about this on, on a regular basis now because he's worried. He's worried that one day a fucking, uh, you know, CIA Blackhawk or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, the, the Rainbow Six, whatever the shit, you know, fucking lands over there in uh, Mexico City and fucking, you, you already know the, the rest of the story. I mean. Yeah, actually, I, I want to ask you um, about Trump considering naming or, you know, declaring the Mexican car, the drug cartels down there, terrorist operations. <laughs> like, like, what do you think about that? Because that's bizarre. Like, how could you start drone bombing Mexico and act like that's going to well, be Well, it's not that, that, it's not that bizarre. If you look at, if you're a historian, you know, you look at everything that's happened uh, since we've been around as humans, yeah, nothing is bizarre per se. You know what I mean? Like, everything is, uh, you know, it's more like, huh. All right, I guess this is what we're doing now. But uh, okay, so but when I when I actually heard that story, I kind of like lost a little bit. I lost a, uh, um, I got I got like really upset, and I did a whole episode on that. I did a live stream, and I talked about the whole thing. But look, man, you know, basically, you you kind of know where I'm gonna go with this. Look, how did we start invading 
um, for reals, the Middle East. You know, we started declaring these entities out there like yeah. ISIS as terrorist groups. And uh, what do we do? As when we label these individuals out there as terrorist organization groups, whatever, that gave us the, the green flag to just, you know, go over there and start doing all these secret operations and, uh, you know, just start taking over and, uh, you know, sending our troops into countries in which we were not allowed because, yeah, we're, you know, we're not sending our army. You know, we're just sending in our you know, our fucking uh, CIA operatives in order to, you know, um, you know, what is it like a uh, surgically, um, operate on, on, on this and take out, you know, Mr. B Osama bin Laden or fucking, uh, b whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? And, yeah, um, the global war on terror, we declared right. war on terror. So now we don't have to declare war on anybody else. Got it's it. All so, terror. so right now, I mean, think about it. I mean, how, the, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, if all of a sudden Trump were to say, we're going to declare war on Mexico, uh oh um do you really think that uh, most look there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be so and very gung ho about it but you got to remember that there's a lot of Hispanics and a lot of Mexicans that live in the US um do you yeah, think that yeah. you, you think they're just all of a sudden going to fucking like turn on their brothers no no and, so yeah, and not only that like if if the Mexican cartels are designated terrorist organizations now anybody in the United States that you know is from Mexico they could be citizens they could you know, legitimately not be terrorists, not associated with any of the cartels or anything, but now they are at risk That's right. because of that designation. If they called somebody who called somebody who called somebody in a cartel, you know what I mean? Like, they could be five steps away from it all and, and they could get lumped up in all of this. I mean, yeah, so, I mean, basically that's how it works. If you know about uh, Edward Snowden and uh, the things that he would talk about, that's basically yeah. it. That's why they can listen to him on every conversation because even if I'm just having a conversation with you in the States, what happens is, is that our phone call gets bounced around in, in, in space between satellites. And the minute that our signal gets taken out of the U.S., which is immediately, right then and there, we are already labeled as, uh, you know, as uh, individuals that need to get flagged. So that's why everybody is, um, you know, every, every, every conversation of every single human out there is listened to because of just that um, – you know that, that that loophole within the Patriot Act and shit, and um, and the same thing goes with what you're saying there. Um, with, with the question, you know, that you asked me about the, the the terrorist organizations, you know, being labeled out here, and uh, I mean about the cartels being labeled terrorist organizations here in Mexico. You said it because what that is going to do is set the president so that our own president can now <laughs> literally send in special troops into Mexico so that they can start stopping the cartels. And it's funny because. Um, when this news broke, I had people from all over the place, you know, meaning, you know, people that are moving to Mexico, people that are, you know, whatever, all kinds of people. And most people were looking at this like, oh, wow, Trump is doing something great. And I'm like, holy shit, wait a minute. That's why I had to do that episode. And I started talking about it because it's like, no, 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 no. This is not what you guys think. This is li literally um, he is starting a proxy war that will eventually turn into a real war. And, um, yeah. you know, right now, what the fuck do you think Mexico is doing? You know, immediately, ever since Trump has been doing this, um, you know, um, uh, Mexico has been, you know, on the phone with Russia pleading for help. Hey, can you send some fucking bombers and planes and tanks and, and everything over here? And what do you think Russia is doing? Russia is like, oh, of course, comrade. We have so many new toys that we want to play with. We're, we'll send them over there. They're, they're on their way already. You know? Yeah, actually, and th that is one of the problems with it, because like at, at first glance, it almost seems like it makes sense. Like the cartels are pretty ruthless. You know what I mean? They're, they're definitely causing a lot of chaos. And I think that's why a lot of people are on board for it and they think it's something good. Well, but, but the, 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 yeah. closer inspection, though, it's, it, it isn't good because the global war on terror. Now we could militarily occupy Mexico. Yep. And then also it's not like they have political agendas or anything. It's, it's criminal activity. It's not a terrorism problem. It's a crime problem. Yeah, I mean, and basically, I mean, you know, right now, remember, we're all terrorists, right? You know, we're all domestic yeah. terrorists. We're all whatever the fuck, you know, according to, to the laws of the, the U.S. Uh, government. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, basically, you know, what's happening down, you know, south of the border type of thing is just the fact that, you know, now, uh, look, man, this the, the way I'm looking at it is like this. You know, again, going back to just history, you got to remember that, you know, back when World War One and World War Two, you know, were taking place, you know, what basically happened was that, you know, the whole cycle, the whole monetary cycle was just doing the wash, rinse and repeat. And so, you know, if you know that cycle, basically what happens is, is as the cycle ends, 
you know, everything needs to be destroyed and then rebuilt. And that's what they did with Europe. They destroyed it. I mean, literally, no one ever thought that, you know, Europe would be, right, and, rub, uh, you know, turned to rubble. But it got turned to rubble twice, all right? And then they rebuilt it. We rebuilt it, whatever. But um, but look at Japan, Japan. Look at Korea. Look at all these places. And so th that, you know, that was all built up after World War II, basically. And so now as we're moving into this future in this decade in this uh scenario well guess what what do you think is going to be the area of the world that is going to start getting destroyed if, if again if you look around if you're in the u.s and you look around you half of it is already destroyed so what, what is you know again if you if you know anything about construction what is easier is it easier to remodel the house or is it easier to just uh, you know uh, burn the whole fucking thing down and build a new foundation or a new house you know what it is. It's to build a new foundation, a new house. So right now, that's what they're looking at. They're just looking at the, the U.S. and looking at, you know, Latin America, looking at everything out here. And they're like, you know what? Let's just fucking burn the motherfucker to the ground and uh, set a new foundation and rebuild and fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, we could, this is how the, the, the cycle works, how the system works. And if you know, I mean, again, right now, you know, like when it goes to... Um, the U.S., you know, the, the U.S. is not like the ones that are running the world. The banks are running the world. The U.S. is taking orders from above. Who is above? The banks. Who are these banks? Again, the Rothschilds and other individual. And we can, you know, again, we can talk about that all day as well. But if you know anything you know, about a lot of this stuff, you know, these banking cartels, you know, they're not being eliminated. They're not being destroyed. They're just moving from one place to the other. And so they're yeah. leaving the U.S. and they're leaving Europe, but they're moving into China. They're moving into Mexico. They're moving into all these, uh, you know, all these other countries and shit. So, uh, you know, right now, you know, the Mexican president, all he's doing is that he is allowing the banks to come in. He is laying the infrastructure. He is now forcing people to get on the grid, forcing people to get a bank account, forcing people to use credit. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. You know, and that that's a brand new thing for people out here. So, again, if you as an American or a European come to Mexico you're and you know these things, you're like, ah, fuck it. At least I'm, I'm here at the beginning of the cycle. You know, and as opposed to being at the end of the cycle, which is what's happening in the U.S. at the moment. And so, yeah. you know, again, all these things are just, you know, that's why Bitcoin is such a major component to, you know, to a lot of these things and crypto and all this, you know, all this stuff is such a major component, like in the sense of like a monkey wrench to the whole system. Because now we have a technology that, you know, now all of a sudden, like, for example, here in Mexico, people have an option, either A, they build a, a brand new banking infrastructure with HSBC, with Chase Bank, and, and all these banks. Or B, they build a brand new infrastructure with cryptocurrency. And you already know the people are pushing the cryptocurrency, and the, the and the government is pushing the you know the the banking cartel. The same thing is happening in India. You you remember what happening uh, what happened in uh, in India a few years ago, and what's still happening today with them trying to eliminate cash, the war on cash, right? You yeah. They want to be able to trace everything and, and know who has what, and then they can start controlling them more. Like, all right, so now you can only withdraw this amount and spend this amount. And we're going to charge you X amount for holding it in here. Yeah, and, and the thing is that, like, basically how all this works is like this, okay? Like, how, how it's supposed to work is that everything is supposed to be tracked. But, how, like, what really supposed to be tracked is, like, for example, our taxes, the government spending, um, you know, all, all of these you know, um, the military, all of this stuff needs to be tracked. And our own private, you know, the private citizen is supposed to be re remain private. No one is supposed to track anything that we as private citizens do. But in today's world, everything that we as private citizens do is tracked to the, to the 10th degree. And yet the government, every government, is getting less and less, you know, tracked. Meaning, again, you know, this happened again like a month ago where, you know, the Pentagon just fucking said, hey, we lost another fucking five trillion dollars. It's like, what the fuck do you mean? What the fuck do you mean you lost five trillion dollars? You know what I mean? And that yet no crazy. one's... You know, I just wondered too, like, who was supposed to be keeping track of that? And then why isn't anybody hold, like held accountable ever? That is crazy that all that money goes missing and nobody gets in trouble and it just keeps happening. It's bizarre. Yeah, and again, if you make a hundred dollar purchase, you know they're gonna block you out of your fucking account because you know, again, for your protection, for your protection. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. We, we, it's funny because we started talking about the YouTube censorship and we went off on. I, I went off on a rant and tangent about all this other shit, but anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> well, actually, I guess to get kind of back 
of track. Since you've been up and running again and, and the whole channel got, you know, fixed, they took away the strikes and things like that, have you noticed any, like, difference in the amount of views or, or anything like that? Like, any difference at all? Yeah, yeah, actually, I, I, my channel's already been throttled for months before that. There, it's already, it was, um, I was seeing a lot of exponential growth, and um, it just kept getting throttled, and it just, it just you know, I already knew kind of what was going on. And, um, and then this was, like, the last nail on the head, and then now after... You know, after this happened, I kind of took a little bit of a break and I've been trying to set up a brand new infrastructure with all these other platforms and all the other stuff. So, you know, basically, yeah, I have seen, uh, you know, my channel has been suffering, you know, my original channel, the one that, uh, you know, um, that got, uh, what is it, blocked or whatever, they got um, censored. The yeah, they got the they got the strikes and censored. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's only been going uh, lower. But um, to me, the thing is that, like, I know how these algorithms work and stuff, so that's why I created a brand new channel, and uh, the brand new channel, in just a, a week or a week and a half, has already seen, um, you know, pretty much a lot of uh, a lot of really good growth. You know, I'm, I'm showing my new channel right here, um, which is, like, the, the travel channel where I'm just going to be talking about, you know, travel stuff and, you know, all the fun bullshit that uh, YouTube likes, but... Uh, but on my channel, what I think, what I'm gonna start doing is that I'm gonna start doubling down and just start talking about the, you know, the, the things that I'm talking about with you today and and other other things that I used to talk about on my channel a lot. Um, in order to help it, you know, it will boost, uh, you know, the channel because that's the thing. I think that my channel was just um, getting kind of, you know, thrown under the bus because I was covering a lot of topics and even though. I'm, a lot of my topics are kind of no-no topics. I still do know that there are a lot of people that talk about no-no topics, and yet, you know, they're doing just fine. It's all about, you know, the thing is, you the, 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 the one thing that YouTube and these individuals out there don't want is for you to be in the middle. They want you to be on one side of the aisle or the other. You know what I mean? So that's the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you're in the middle, you suffer. And, um... And that, that's what's crazy, too, because I feel like in reality, like outside of social media and outside of YouTube, most people are pretty much in the middle. You know what I mean? It isn't as hyper-partisan as it seems like it is online. Like most people could agree on a lot of different things, and they don't want everybody knowing that, though. They want that divide. So they want to make it seem like everybody is fighting and everybody is either conservative or liberal. And I, I honestly don't think that that's the reality outside of social media. Right, right. I mean, again, I, I totally agree with you. You know, like, uh, I think most of us are in agreement of that. And like, uh, you know, we're all like figuring this out slowly as, uh, you know, more, you know, the left and the right become even more fringe elements. They become even more polarized. And, uh, you know, the middle, again, a.k.a. the, the ex middle class, you know, but everyone in the middle, you know, we, you know, we're all more, you know, realizing more and more every day that, you know, they're, you know, we all think alike. We, we all have more in common than we don't. And um, that's what they're, that's why they're trying to silence that. And they, if you, if all of a sudden I start talking about Trump, either good or bad, but all I do is like talk about that on my channel, my channel will blow up all of a sudden. But if all of a sudden yeah. I, I, I stay in the middle, that's the problem because they don't, they want you to, to, to create conflict. They want you to create, um, you know, um, uh, you know, negativity. They want you to, you know, keep feeding the beast. That's what they want, you know? Yeah. But, uh, That's 100% true, man. But honestly, we're like examples right now in this conversation, just examples of what they probably fear the most. It's like you're in Mexico, I'm in the United States. We're having a conversation that, you know, a couple hundred people might listen to about this alternative currency and censorship and these foreign wars. Like, that's what they don't want. They don't want everyday people being able to do stuff like this. So, honestly, I think it's a good sign that at least, you know, the resistance is kind of, uh, it's working. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. The tools. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. sure. For sure it's working. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no. No, but the tools are out there, and, you know, we're getting it done. We're having the conversations, and, and I don't know. I think that's actually a good sign, at least. You know, they, they haven't actually banned everybody yet. There is still competing voices out there, and people are, are trying to just look at it realistically and not be in their little partisan box and all that. So, I don't know. I'm feeling good about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. To me, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling amazing about it. I, I mean, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, it's finally starting to... To take uh, take life, you know what I mean? Like to me, I've been in this space for a little while. I've been talking about a lot of these things, you know, for even longer. But it's kind of like one of those things that it's like, you know, you're talking, you're 1900 talking about going to the moon. You're still like kind of like a little bit of far away from there. But I think that we're finally starting to 
to hit our stride in which um, as the censorship gets stronger, as they start taking people's uh, not just, uh, you know, right to speak away, but, you know, the right to um, even have a bank account, the right to just being uh, an individual in today's uh, world, as they keep taking all these things away, you know, more and more people are just going to start using these alternative platforms or alternative uh you know, ways of, uh, uh, um, you know, acquiring what they need to acquire, you know, and, and so that they can survive. And that's basically how all this always works, because it's always all about control. People don't understand when uh, right now um, the upper one percent just keeps getting richer and the, the poor people keep getting poor. And people are always like on the, on the you know, always of the misconception, like, well, but why do these rich people need more money? Why are they taking away more from us? You know, why? They, they just can't understand it. But, you know, basically what it boils down to, it's all about power. Because the people that are in the upper 1%, let's just say that my net worth is $10 billion. If I were to get like an extra million dollars in my bank account, it doesn't even really make a difference to me at all. But if all of a sudden in your bank account, you're missing $10 or missing $100 all oh, every month. Holy shit. That's a difference. And so that's basically. And so how does. And so what happens is like if you all of a sudden are, you know, if they take away $10 every month from you or $100 every month from you or whatever it is, that gives you less power because the less resources you have, well, the less power you have in order to do anything period and so the less resources you have the less power you have the less of a voice you have the less of everything you have the more submissive you become the more compliant you become with the system because again as you guys can see today you know most people right now are afraid to voice their opinion just because they might lose their job and if they lose their job they lose their income if they lose their income they're on the street if they're on the street they're that's you know that's it you already know it's a statistic, yeah. you know, it's a, you become a statistic. Either you're a bum on the street or you or you go to jail and you're living in jail. It's one or the other. That's it. You know what I mean? And so either you comply with the system or don't worry. We got a home for you, motherfucker. You know what I mean? And that's the yeah. thing, you know, and you're still going to be feeding the system because if you're on the fucking street, you're, t you're, you're, what are you doing? You're helping the money printing because all of that, uh, all of the services that are going to help you out, you know what I mean? Is helping the system out. Same thing as if you're in jail. You know what I mean? You don't want to work. You don't want to fucking uh, be on the grid. You don't want to do any of this shit. Don't worry about it, motherfucker. We're going to stick you in a fucking cell and we're going to we're going to make, uh, you know, we're going to fucking um, uh, we're going to turn you into um, uh, um, uh, 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 what is it like the Matrix? You know, what I mean, you're going to be something that the system is going to be feeding off of. And that's it. You know, what I mean, you're, you're yeah, man. And um, it, it's it's a very 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 sick world that we're in right now. And um, more as more people keep you know, getting, uh, what is it, as more people are getting uh, uh, put into this matrix, then more, you know, again, but when, when you have nothing to lose, that's that's the most dangerous thing for a human. Revolutions only really happen when you have nothing to lose. Right now, you know, at this moment in time, people still have a lot to lose. You know, people can still get fed. In fact, if you get like a food stamp card, you don't even have to go to the, the grocery store. You can just take your fucking food stamp card to fucking McDonald's. And you're good to go. So it's like, I mean, you know, they, you know, the system itself is making it so that you don't want to get off the system. But if the system is kicking you out of the system, well, you know, you, you're not going to just roll over and die. You're going to try to survive. And then that's when all this new technology and all these other, you know, new tools and mechanisms that we have in uh, in place start, you know, really taking hold because, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what, you know, we're, you know, we're animals, we're human. And that survival, it's survival. It, what is it like? It's um, fight or flight right now. And so most people are in flight mode. But if you don't have flight mode, you got fight mode. And that's it. You know what I mean? All, all, all the system is trying to do now is keep everybody in flight mode because they sure as hell don't want the people to be in fight mode because, well, that means game over for them. Yeah. All right. Well, uh... <laughs> some time oh um, shit yeah this has been a while <laughs> i guess we should start wrapping it up is there anything you want to add or anything you want to plug before um well yeah yeah sure i mean might as well start wrapping it up here real quick uh yeah i do want to plug my youtube channel i want to plug my both my youtube channels you know whether it's my original channel which i talk about a lot of these things uh you're probably watching me on my channel right now or on the big shoot channel of uh of uh, Toya Harada, <laughs> um, but regardless, um, yeah, check out my YouTube channel, check out my BitChute channel, 
check out my uh, my other YouTube channel. Check out all the links below, um, and uh, you can find me. I'm all over the internet. You can literally just type Jose Ortega, and uh, hopefully they haven't censored me completely like Alex Jones, in which you can still find me out there. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll just plug me in. Uh, and, and I want to thank you, brother. I mean, for reals, because uh, after the whole crypto apocalypse happened, um, you reached out to me on Twitter, you know, as the whole thing was going on and said, hey, would you mind, uh, you know, if I interview you and talk to you about these things? And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, man, for sure, man, that'd be awesome. And uh, yeah, here we are a few days later after after the dust settled, we're talking about it. And uh, I really want to thank you. And I really appreciate you and uh, your channel and um, and the conversation we had today. Hey, man, thank you as well. I, I was glad when he got back to me because, like I said, I, I never really interviewed anybody like this before. So it was awesome. Thanks thanks to you as well. <laughs> yeah, man. I guess uh, we can thank each other, huh? <laughs> We're thanking. <Yeah. laughs> All right, guys. All right. Well, I guess uh, let's just end it here. So I guess let me just do my little, uh, uh, end, yeah, man. My, my little end routine real quick. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you guys. Toya Harada also appreciates you guys, and you already know what to do. If you like this content, all you got to do is please like, please subscribe, please share, because you already know YouTube ain't sharing this stuff, so you got to share it for us if you want to let other people know about this stuff. And uh, hit that bell icon, and that's it, guys. You know, don't forget to stay awesome, and uh, and thank you, and thank you again, Toyo. Um, I, I really appreciate you, and I'm sorry I keep butchering your name, but uh, <laughs> thank no you so much, man. Yeah, thank you. Take care, man. All right, man. Later. Later, guys.